Hey, my name is Kyle, and you're watching the Newfoundland Hobbyist. Now, although I'm a teacher and kind of in the academic community, most of my hobbies lay outside of that realm. So I spend a lot of time in the outdoors. Uh, I'm familiar with the gun community. I love guns, and you'll see that here. Uh, I've dabbled in various martial arts, old tool restorations, craftsmanship, woodworking. Uh, my, some of my latest ventures are blacksmithing, and I love it all. I'm constantly learning more and more, and uh, it's the only way I know how to live. It just brings a lot of joy to me, and I'll keep going. So one of my other primary hobbies is filmmaking, and I've used that over the past two years. I've been building a YouTube following. Uh, I'll throw the name of my channel here right on the bottom of the screen. Some of you want to check it out, but I've been sort of following all my project hobbies on YouTube so you can see a whole barrage of different things that I've worked on you can sort of get a timeline of what I've gone through over the last few years uh, hobby wise this show you're watching right now is an extension of that I'm gonna be showing the same type of things perhaps a little more in depth but I'm hoping it'll be entertaining for you all the bottom line is I think hobbies are a great way to build you as a person I think everyone should have something they're working on at all times a project aside from everything else all the other stuff that goes along with life you should have a hobby I think it's really important and I wouldn't be able to imagine it having it any other way starting off today here we're gonna look at one of my main hobbies and what I feel deserves uh, a front row seat to this show and that is sharpening I think the concept of sharpening deserves to be in this very first episode of this show because it's such a vital skill to have. Whether you're a big hobbyist, whether you're a big craftsman or not, everyone should be able to sharpen in my opinion and I think there are some fundamental ways we should be doing that. Um, since the beginning of time or since man started using tools, we required uh, the ability to put an edge on, I mean in the, in the, in the beginning it would have been rocks and then bones and etc but we sharpened items for them to be effective and that's no different today we're gonna to head back inside right now into my sharpening table I'm gonna show you how exactly I accomplished my sharpening in this cabinet here is one of the reasons that I sharpen so much and that is I'm a knife collector I love knives I've got a lot of different knives I've gained some lost some gave some away some are out in the woods somewhere that maybe someone else has picked up by now hopefully but uh, I love knives don't do much with it now because I have a few main users that I like and uh, the rest just kind of sit around not getting a lot of use once in a while occasionally so there's knives and then up here is a hobby that I've delved into for a few years and I absolutely love something you don't see every day my razor collection is very important to me for multiple reasons one is the heirloom aspect of it and they're just so rich to pass on um, in years to come that's another story another is the history that goes into these things and also um, I use them I do not shave with a normal modern day razor all my shaving is done with these either straight razors or safety razors as you see here um, here's a brand new boker I've had it for a couple years this is the only new razor this entire collection all the rest are vintage they're all restored and sharpened by myself and I use them on a regular basis switch out it's just an awesome hobby I absolutely love it so something to discuss right away and that's I don't support any type of use of sharpening items really other than traditional stones and there's several main reasons for that first of all it's portability so most of these systems you're talking like the Lansky the Edge Pro different things like that are not very transportable they're big clunky systems uh, some of them require to be bolted down which is just silly it's it's useless in my opinion you need I, I need something that I can take around with me two is expense 
uh, these systems are usually fairly expensive and uh, much more of an investment to get into sharpening than just with a traditional stone. Three is the ability to be universal. These systems are usually very specified and they don't offer you the ability to sharpen anything which is what I need. If I'm going to have a sharpening system I can't just be able to do knives. I need to be able to do straight razors and I need to be able to do axes and hand tools and chisels and etc. And those systems I, as far as I know there is no one system that allows you to do that. Lastly and one of the primary reasons I think you should use traditional whetstones is because they require actual human skill. They require you to understand angles with your body so you need to actually manually do everything yourself and that's a key component to everything I do is doing things yourself. Not having a fixed jig or fixed angle to take the human part out of it. I want you to learn how to sharpen. Everyone should know exactly what's happening by using something like a Lansky that fixes the angle for you to me you just don't get the same benefits. So that's some primary reasons. Now let's get over to the stones. So we've come a long ways from just using beach rocks to sharpen our, our knives. I mean you can still use that and that's one of the great things about uh, about actually knowing how to sharpen is you can use anything then to sharpen and you'll understand how it works. Here's a stone. It belongs to my grandfather now but it belonged to one of the old men way back in years who I believe was a boat builder this was his stone. Notice how it's hollowed out here. It's great. This is a pretty cool old stone. I've never used it, but it's quite a fine grit. It's beautiful. Even since this, we've come a long ways in stone technology. And let me show you a few examples here right now. So first of all, I only use water stones. And that's because water stones are cleaner. You don't have the mess. You don't have to keep buying oil. You just throw them in some water and you're good to go. And plus, um, if you think about these stones being portable, as we mentioned earlier, you can take these stones in the back country if you got a little bit of water or river or something, soak them, they're good to go. I don't need to bring honing oil with me. So I really advocate water stones instead. Now I'll start off by saying as well, you don't need all of this here. Sharpening with wet stones can be tough to get into and everyone tells you you need a huge kit. You do not. You need a very basic kit. This is just what I've acquired over time. I pick up new ones. Why not invest in my craft over time? I did with just this stone for a very long time. So first off here we have just a general hardware store tool stone. I believe this is a Norton brand. And uh, I really like these because they're super cheap, they're really tough, and they're really coarse. So the idea with sharpening is you want to start from a coarse grit, as coarse as you need to, and uh, a coarser grit will remove steel faster, a finer grit slower. So I use this for real heavy jobs, removing chips, nicks, dents, or reestablishing an edge, that type of thing. Then we have a 400 grit here, so this is going to be finer. This is a beautiful stone. This is a Nanawa, made in Japan. I got this one from paulsfinest.com, Canadian dealer. It has great deals on these if you're looking for a great whetstone. So that's a 400 grit. Um, a combo stone, which I highly advocate for first time stone buyers. This is a Woodstock. It's a 1000 on this side, a 6000 on this side. Fantastic stone. Combo stones are great. We have a 3000 grit Nanawa here, which is a fantastic stone. Again, I love the Nanawa stones. Also from Paul's Finest. And then we have a King 8000 grit. This is a really fine stone. If you're not familiar with grits, you feel this. This is this is so fine. I don't even know how to, how to explain it. Maybe like the paint on your car. Really fine stone. Then we have a Nagura here. This is 600 grit. It's called a Nagura. It's used for flattening the surfaces of these stones or just uh, revealing fresh grits. Lastly, we have a stone holder here. This is by Nanawa. Again, not necessary. You can use them flat on, a, on a, something grippy like this, but it's nice to have a stone holder like this to get your stones up off the table so you can get your hands down around your, your blade or whatever you're sharpening. So if you're really new to wet stones, it's just like it says. I have some lukewarm, like room temperature water here. I'll just throw my stones in the water and you'll notice they'll start if you can hear that, you can probably see the bubbles. They'll start saturating themselves, all the little pores with water. And when that's happening, 
Um, the stone picks up a natural lubrication when they soak in enough water. So I'll just sew them in, including my Nagura, wherever that is. And once they've soaked in enough, then when you're sharpening, the stones stay nice and slick and they cut better. They don't gum up with metal particle. These are synthetic whetstones. You can get natural ones too. I prefer th synthetic because um, they tend to cut a little faster. And what's nice about synthetic is they're designed to wear um, as you're working with your knife. So as you're sharpening, the surface of the whetstone is also wearing away. This might seem like a bad thing, and it does require a bit more maintenance to keep your stones flat if you want them flat. But the nice thing is you always have a brand new stone to work with because as your surface wears away, you just get a new surface. So this stone here can wear away to nothing, and that's what will happen over time. It will just keep getting thinner and thinner and thinner until the stone is gone, and then you pick up a new one. Now that's going to take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sharpening sessions. It'll last you years, so it's not really something to worry about, but just something that you should know. Natural stones are, tend to be a lot harder, so they don't wear away. So your stones will fill up with metal particle and they'll cut slower. You have to resurface them, it's a bigger deal. So I prefer a synthetic whetstone like this. So we're going to do a bit of sharpening right now, and this is one of my favorite everyday carry knives. Just a note, I carry a knife always, everywhere I go, at all times, does not matter. And this is a favorite. You notice the pocket clip there is pretty worn. This is a great knife made by Spyderco. It's the Native. Okay, it's got a great, I just love almost everything about it. It's just a perfect knife in my opinion. Maybe not quite as classy as I'd like, but has so many great features, including some really tough super steel. It's S30V. S30V is a fantastic, really tough steel. Now we've got a dull edge here today. Okay, it's not, uh, it's not cutting paper. That's definitely no good. Back near the heel, no, it's still not getting it. Okay, so that's a pretty crappy edge going to fix that now on the whetstone. So whenever I teach someone to sharpen a knife, the first thing I tell them is to assess how bad your knife actually is. A good way to do this is to get some light shining straight down on the apex of your edge and look for any reflection of light. So this spider co here now, um, it's not overly dull. I've got a little bit of light shining on certain parts up around this part the more heavily used portion of the blade. I've got a few nicks. I can see the light reflecting off that. And the front half of the blade here, I can see, I know it's dull because it's catching light. You probably can't pick that up in the camera, but it's reflecting some light, so that means there's a flat spot. If you have a true apex on your edge, there is nothing there to reflect light. It comes to a perfect apex, so it's not really that dull. And that's how you determine what grit of stone you need to start with. So this is definitely not a dull enough edge to require my roughest tool stone, but I will start with a 400 grit nanowire and bring this to a perfect apex, remove those chips, and then we'll start honing that edge. So now we're about to sharpen on our stone and the question of angle comes in. You need to hold this blade at as good of a fixed angle as you can and try to maintain that angle as you work with the stone. Now the tricky part is, how do I know what angle to use? So assuming you want to stick with the factory grind, what I would do and what I recommend is to lay your knife flat on the stone and you'll notice a shadow underneath that edge and you're just going to tip your blade up until that shadow disappears. Okay, do you see that? Bigger shadow and it lessens and once you get to the point where it just disappears, stop there and that is your angle. So this knife has a pretty shallow angle. So you notice as I tip it right up like this, you notice that black line disappearing under the edge. So that's what you're looking for. So tip that blade towards you. I'm going to tip it up until that shadow disappears. And that is my angle I'm going to try to hold while I'm sharpening. Now this takes some practice. You're not going to be able to hold that perfect angle right from the start, but you'll get there. 
So again, just trying to maintain that angle right from heel to toe. Now I'm doing forward and backward strokes. Some people will recommend only forward. And I only use forward strokes or strokes into the edge um, when I get to the end of the sharpening because if you have to lift off the stone every time and come back on you sort of have to reset your hand position and your angle all over again whereas if you just leave it on the stone like this you can kind of lock your hands lock your wrists and just go to work back and forth and you're checking what you're checking for is that you have an even grain pattern or even grip pattern the entire width of your uh, of your bevel here. Now I probably should mention stone pressure. How much pressure should you put on your knife? And I use a fair amount of pressure when I'm just starting. I think I'll leave it at your discretion because it's not that big a deal. But um, I use a fair amount of pressure when I'm starting, just enough so it cuts nice. So about like you use with uh, say when you're using a bastard file to sharpen an axe or sharpen a tool like that I mean you're using a fair amount of pressure not enough so that you're gouging out the steel or so that you're risking hurting yourself or your tools but enough so that your stone cuts efficiently every stone is different and I find that I like to lighten pressure as I'm getting closer to the grit I want so right now I'm getting closer to being finished with this 400 grit I'm using nice light pressure I'm being really careful to get nice long even strokes on each side so I have a nice apex what I don't like doing at this point and um, so we have two types of strokes you have cutting strokes strokes going into your edge and strapping strokes which you're pulling away from your edge strapping strokes tend to pull a little wire burr because you're pulling at your knife you pull a little wire burr off that's kind of dangling there off your edge it's on a microscopic level but sometimes you can feel it with your fingernails strokes going into your edge or cutting strokes removes any of that trash any of that burr and it makes it so that your apex there is a true apex so now that I'm done with this 400 I'll give it a little feel test. You should feel a nice bite. I like to go lengthways very lightly with the edge. I've got a nice bite there. It's a grabby edge. Now we'll move on to my next script stone, and that's a 1000. That's the that's the next highest I have from here. This is a great feeling stone. You might notice that it sounds a little smoother. It doesn't sound as gritty as a 400. So I'm having a look at my edge. Okay, I'm already getting a pretty uniform 1000 and what that means is I don't want to see a mixy a mixy pattern a, a little bit of 400 grit scratches cutting through there and a little bits of 1000 I want it to be nice and clean only 1000 grit scratches so that's what you're looking for that's a tough concept I know people have is when do I switch to my next stone Okay, let's have a look. Looking lovely. I'm having a feel here. The super grabby edge really grabs the finger. So I'm going to start lightening up now because I have my scratch pattern on one side. And now I'm going to do singles and get progressively lighter. Only into my edge now again because I'm trying not to create a burr and this is just a very simple process then we'll finish up with this stone we'll move on to the 3000 okay so here's my Nanawa 3000 grit this is a beautiful stone these Nanawas have such a big surface again you can see it's kind of dirty and hazy from my last sharpening session so I'll quickly take my Nagura stone here and just resurface it and you can probably see now we have a nice clean finish you just see in the dirt there I'll give it a quick rinse and here we have it a beautifully clean 3000 grit stone and it's the exact same procedure check our angle 
Okay, so tip it up till we have the right angle. And start working the stone. I'll go with forward and back strokes again. And when you get really competent, when you get really good, lots of practice here, you know what you're doing. So you can pick up speed, you can get really quick at, uh, at sharpening. So notice all the black on the stone. That's actually the steel being cut by the stone. So even though it's a 3000 grit stone, which is silky smooth, still cuts pretty fast when you have a high quality stone like this. Something important I want to mention, and that is you do not need all these stones. I know I mentioned it earlier, but right now I'm showing going from stone to stone to stone. So from 400 to 1000 to 3000, and eventually we'll work up to 6000 after this one. You could just have that combo stone I have, which is a 1000 and 6000, and you'd get the same results, but it would mean you'd have to spend more time on each. So because you're starting with a 1000, it's going to take you longer to do a heavier sharpening job than starting with, say, my 400 grit. So we have this fresh 6000 grit stone here that I'm going to quickly resurface, remove any steel particle from. Okay, so we got a fresh clean surface. I'll give it a quick rinse. Okay, and now it's ready to work. So I'm getting right to the end of my sharpening job here now. Just super light strokes into the edge to make sure I don't get any burr. Got a nice uniform scratch pattern, nice uniform polish. And I'll just stop when I feel like stopping. That's all I'm doing here. It's not real important. Okay, make sure to cover the entire length of the blade. And try to keep your bevel as consistent as possible. I'm feeling my edge here now. Ooh, that has a lot of grab to it. It's just grabbing my skin, which is what you want. This edge is almost done. So you've probably seen stropping in uh, old movies, barber shops and stuff, where the guy takes the razor and runs it back and forth on the, on the leather strap. Well, these are paddle straps. So these are still just pieces of scrap leather. I made both of these myself. And they do the same thing as those guys used in the old movies with the straight razors. They just help to refine that edge a little bit more by ensuring there's no burr and just polishing or smoothing out the edge a little bit. I start off with a compounded strap and by compound it's a rough sided leather so like the suede side of leather and this is just a little bit of uh, polishing compound I got a Canadian tire you can get it in the like the buffing wheel section it works great and I will strap and remember we talked earlier about strapping strokes so strokes away from your edge that's what we're going to use here try to keep the same bevels you did with sharpening and I'll probably do 15 or 20 strokes on my edge and this polishing compound will just help polish that edge to an insanely sharp finish okay so that's probably actually enough there now so remember we already have a 6000 grit polish this piece is a piece of just uh, this is actually an old guitar strap with that smooth finish leather and I'll just give a few strokes strapping strokes on that leather and it's really thick and I find it just these are steps here that are completely <laughs> unnecessary to get um, unnecessarily sharp okay it, it will improve sharpness but when you're working up to 3000 grit on a stone or 6000 grit on a stone sorry I mean you have an insanely sharp edge already and then that begs the question do you really need to go to this level Perhaps not, but it sure is fun. Okay, now let's feel that edge. That is sharp. Let's see if it's sharp enough for one of these cool paper tests. That is what we just did. And we've been here for just a few minutes on those wet stones. And look at the edge we have compared to what we started with. 
I mean, just insanely razor sharp. And what's so cool about these whetstones is that you can apply those same techniques to any knife or any edge tool and get the same result. I mean, it's just fantastic. You can use those skill sets. Okay? So there it is, our finished edge that we did today together. I hope you learned something in this video. I hope I've sold you on whetstones if you're not already. And uh, I hope you pick up your own whetstones. Get into the hobby yourself. There's so many great resources online. But I hope this resource here today has helped you out a lot. I hope I've convinced you to pick up the hobby and learn the skill that underlies all your other skills. That's what's so important about these whetstones is that you need to be able to sharpen and maintain your knives, tools, axes, and things like that to be able to use them for your other hobbies. So sharpening is such an important hobby. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyist.